Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of The Valder Beebe Show, a new kind of spiritual talk show. Broadcast on FM radio, internet websites, and print publications. I am well known for that celebrity interview. Interviews that we conduct in studio, by telephone, and by satellite with today's most fascinating people. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you on ValderBeebeShow.com. Good morning, Dr. Perlmutter. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am ready to go. They told me you got a great book. What's the title of your book? Uh, it's called My Life with Valder. <clears throat> it's a, oh, it's that, to be a that should be a bestseller. <laughs> no, it's called The Grain Brain Whole Life Plan. I've been reading a lot about your book, and I'm sorry your team didn't send it to me or I hadn't gotten it yet, but that's okay. I've been seeing a lot about it in the news. Would you share that also with my audience? I will. Um, you know, I've written other books and uh, Grain Brain, which is uh, now in 28 languages. So we're getting the message out that uh, our choices really play an important role in terms of our brain health. I mean, everyone's heard of a heart smart diet and women should uh, have a calcium rich diet because it's good for their bones. But now we embrace the idea that our food choices and our lifestyle choices play huge roles in determining the destiny of our brain health. So it's really, uh, you know, at a time when we don't have any drugs, any uh, pharmaceuticals that can help us with respect to the brain, that can treat Alzheimer's, for example, how empowering it is to know that our lifestyle choices play such a huge role. Our lifestyle, our uh, food choices, they're now intersecting. So when you say light, when food choices play uh, a role in our healthy brain, is it just any food? It just Can I just eat regular food and just eat enough of that and be healthy? Or do I need to eat quality food? Do I need to eat organic food? What are you telling us? I think organic food is certainly very important, but the broad strokes here are to realize that sugar and carbohydrates are lethal for the brain, and the diet needs to be much more enriched uh, with fiber to nurture the gut bacteria, and also welcoming fat back to the table. Things like extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil, grass-fed beef, wild fish, nuts and seeds. We've got to give the brain good levels of healthful fat so that it can build new brain cells. And you know, that brings us to another point, and that is, you know, years ago we never realized that the brain continues to grow new brain cells throughout your lifetime. It's basically stem cell therapy, and now we know that the most powerful way to enrich your brain with new cells is to engage in aerobic exercise. So it's really um, a, an epiphany for us to realize that there's a, a suddenly a brand new playing field where we're growing new brain cells and also that our gut bacteria, the, the hundred trillion bugs that live in the gut, are playing a huge role in determining the health of the brain. Dr. David Perlmutter is a board-certified neurologist and a fellow of the American College of Nutrition. Dr. Perlmutter, there are four simple ways that we can instantly uh, uh, reduce stress. Uh, obviously, that plays a role in what we're doing here, right? Well, stress is directly toxic for the brain. When you are persistently under stress, your body secretes a chemical called cortisol, and cortisol is basically lethal for the brain. Uh, and it's really v incredibly important that we offload that by getting enough sleep, engaging in exercise, and you know these days trying to divert our attention away from negativity. Uh, there is certainly plenty of that around for everyone right now. We don't need to necessarily participate in all the negativity that's going on around us. And I think one of the biggest ways to reduce the effects of stress in your body and certainly in your brain is to have gratitude in your heart. It turns out that, yes, diet is important, exercise is important, so is sleep, but the, the other pillar of the program 
is to daily express gratitude, recognize all of the good things that are going on around you and be grateful for those things and even act accordingly, giving back. And again, um, you know, there's a lot going on around us right now that tends to detract us from that. And the bottom line is all of the negativity that you see going on uh, is not doing you any good. You want to really regain a sense of positivity. And I think that might be the most important take-home point from the new book. Dr. Perlmutter, I think you're on to something. Uh, how do we avoid common inju- injuries that can lead to maybe disability and later on to brain dysfunction? I think the biggest injury to the brain is a process called inflammation. Now, you're familiar with inflammation. Your, your knee might become inflamed after a long walk, uh, but inflammation as a mechanism is what destroys the brain uh, in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis. Inflammation is the cornerstone of diabetes and cancer and coronary artery disease. So the diet is really critical here. And again, we've got to reduce the sugars and the carbs and eat more fiber, eat more good fat, and again, regain our ability to, to move around. People are so sedentary, sitting in their chairs all day long. When we move around, we're reducing inflammation, and that helps to reduce our risk for Alzheimer's. Again, that's 5.4 million Americans who have that situation now, uh, and it's, it's become a, a huge issue, and we have no treatment for that problem. So this is really looking at what is detrimental or toxic to the brain and making some very simple, straightforward lifestyle choices. I mean, here I am, a brain specialist, talking to you today about the food that you eat. Why? Because the food that you eat directly influences your destiny in terms of your brain. So it's, it's really a new dawn. It is, and you sound like you've been talking to my dietitian. She doesn't <laughs> want to know what I eat. She wants to know what I eat, what it ate. Oh, that's true. But even more importantly, what you eat is then what the hundred trillion organisms that live in your gut are going to eat. And those gut bacteria make neurotransmitters, the chemicals that determine whether you're happy or sad. They regulate your metabolism and your appetite. And they even play a pivotal role in determining whether you have inflammation in your body or not. So, you know, We say that a woman who is pregnant has to be careful because now she's eating for two. Well, everybody, pregnant or not, is eating for a hundred trillion. When you look upon your food as it's going to nurture your gut bacteria or damage your gut bacteria, we now know that's a major, major pivot point in terms of health or, or illness. Dr. Perlmutter, this is just revolutionary information all packed into one book. All of these theories and all of these proven facts that you're talking about from data, you know, they're a little bit of metaphysical, they're a little bit of nutrition, they're a little bit of health and wellness, but it's all put together for us in the brain game. Thank you so very much for doing that. Thank you. I'm glad you had me here today. Thanks.